Hi there. This is actually a response to a comment made on the Moore's Circle and Excel video, which of course might make you look at this and say, wait a minute, why are we looking at Word and not Excel? The reason we're looking at Word is because I want to talk a bit about the math behind how we're going to find the tangent to Moore's Circle before we turn around and actually find the tangent to Moore's Circle in Excel. There's like five minutes of math in here. It's not really bad math at all. So here's sort of a hacked together version of Moore's circle. I've got this angle theta. I've got these tau sigma axes. The circle can sit wherever it wants to. I've got this point P here where I want to find the tangent line to Moore's circle, right? And what I know is I've got this angle theta coming up from the center, from the, from the horizontal axis up to line CP, okay? Which I can get that. If I know where that point lives, I can just do rise over run and then, well, if I have rise over run, right? Here's the rise. There's the run. This is what the math teachers all, and when they start to teach these things like slopes, that's how they like to describe it, right? So what we know is that the tangent of theta. Is equal to the slope of CP, the tangent of that angle is equal to the slope no matter what, as long as we measure the angle from the horizontal axis, from the from the positive horizontal axis, right? Well, this angle here, right? Since these two lines within the limits of my drawing skills with a stylus and a screen, right? They're perpendicular. Well, that means this angle here is theta minus 90 degrees. Okay, so if I want the slope of line tangent, the red line, right, all I need to do is figure out what, how that tangent of theta minus 90 degrees is. If I can figure out what that is, that'd be great. I'd love to be able to do that. Best news is we actually can, okay? And it's not gonna turn out as badly as it seems at first glance. We're going to start off with a couple of trig definitions, and everything's just going to kind of flow from there. So remember, in general, tangent of any angle, I'm going to use theta again. You can show this from the definitions in terms of what my math teachers always call the x side, the adjacent, the y side, the opposite, and the r side, the hypotenuse. Right? You can show that this is always true. Okay, the tangent of theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Let me say it too, All right? That means tangent of theta minus 90 degrees. And this looks like I'm getting ugly, right? So I've got sine of theta minus 90 degrees over cosine theta minus 90 degrees. And if you've seen a couple of these mathematical derivations in your life, you realize they often look really ugly right before they look really pretty. This is no exception. If we remember how the sines and cosines of differences of angles work, we just have to hack it out, right? The sine of the angle is going to equal sine theta cosine 90 degrees minus cosine theta sine 90 degrees. The denominator, the cosine difference, is cosine theta, cosine 90 degrees, plus sine theta, sine 90 degrees. I'm taking out my purple pen, which students who are in my classes know means I'm about to knock some stuff out. I know that cosine 90 degrees is zero. So both of those terms just took a walk for us. The sine of 90 degrees is 1, and isn't this nice? The tangent of theta minus 90 degrees is simply minus cosine theta over sine theta is equal to minus 1 over tangent of theta. Works for any two angles, and you can use this same math with a slight difference and show the same thing works for theta plus 90 degrees, which makes sense because if I measure the angle, I'm gonna go back up for a sec, if I measure the angle from the bottom side, from the right side of the line, 
up the other direction, right? For, I, I measured, I should, I should say I measured from the horizontal down to the right side of the line. If I measure from the horizontal up to the left side of the line, where I have the point P drawn, right? This angle in here, if I use that angle instead, that's theta plus 90 degrees. And gosh, I hope it has the same tangent because otherwise those lines have different slopes and that makes absolutely no sense, right? It turns out you can show that the tangent of theta plus 90 degrees is also negative one over the tangent of theta. I'll leave that for you, okay? So what this means is if I have the slope of my line from the center out to the tangent point, I flip the slope, put a negative sign in front of it, I've now got the slope of the tangent line. That's the key that we need to understand in order to make this work in Excel. Ah, I said Excel. Here's my Excel. This is exactly the Moore circle thing that we had before. Now I'm going to work with a tangent point. And since my uh, since my friend in the comments didn't mention how he was doing this in particular, I'm going to start with a point with a known value of sigma. Let me knock that out real quick. I want sigma. And I'm going to set it up for both the positive and negative shear stresses. Okay. So my point, I'm going to say my center's at 17. I'm going to assume this is KSI because just the way the magnitudes and numbers are, you don't see this in MPA that often, right? So if that's 17 KSI, 42 KSI is my maximum, my, my maximum principal stress. And let's say my sigma value is 25. Just to pick one, what are my corresponding values of shear, strain, shear stress? I can do the math on it, or I can remember that I did it down here to get a point on the circle. These are points on Moore circle given a value of sigma. Copy, paste. There's my about points on Moore circle. If you don't believe it, let's go over here to about 25. There we go. I'm not gonna get much closer. And I should have 25.03 for sigma. And I should have 23.76 for tau. Hey, got 25 and 23.77. Makes sense it should be a little bit higher because the circle's getting higher as I go a little bit to the left. I'm going left by you know two one hundredths of a, of a KSI. Okay, All right, we're doing fine here. So now I'm gonna put the slope on the next line. And the slope is going to be exactly what we had in that formula. Now, yes, the formula I put in here is going to have a hole in it. If we have, you know, if we choose a point such that the uh, such that the tangent line is vertical, well, that's easy because those are the principal stress points, right? So if we choose, if we're trying to draw a tangent to one of those, just draw a vertical line and get done with it, right? We're trying to do the harder case. So the tangent is the tangent of the angle. The slope is rise over run. We want negative run over rise because we want negative the inverse of the slope. So we want negative, there's my negative. The run is going to be from my known point minus where my center lives, right? Again, the line from the center out to the point. So the run is equal to that. It's equal to the point's x coordinate, the sigma coordinate, minus the center sigma coordinate. We're going to divide that by the point's vertical coordinate, the tau coordinate divided by this, or sorry, minus the center's coordinate. Well, the center's tau coordinate is zero. Let's just use the shear strain, shear stress, I should say, and there we go. That's what we have. I want to copy this over, right? So this is the slope of the line that goes from this point here and is tangent to the circle. It makes sense. It should be, if I go to the right, that should be going down. That negative slope makes perfect sense. So what about what about the negative value that I have here? Aha, uh -huh. all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my run, right? So in order to keep my run, I'm going to put in a host of dollar signs. I may have too many. I don't care. I'm being paranoid, all right? And there's the slope of the other line. Hey, look, it's the positive. Go figure. Same run. The rise was inverted, negative. We got the same value. This makes a lot of sense. So now I'm going to put in a new point plus, as I'm going to call it, and a new point minus. Why am I going to do this? Because I want to make sure I draw enough of a line. And I want to put in one more variable all the way out here, d sigma. This makes a little more sense in a second why I'm calling it that. The short version is it's going to be a change in the normal stress. That's it. I'll make it 10. I want to make it a variable so I can just play around with that and not to change all the formulas. I'm lazy that way, right? I call it efficiency. 
So that's equal to sigma, right? My new point plus this, its sigma value will be equal to the original sigma plus d sigma. And new point minus will be equal to, go figure, that point minus d sigma. Again, there's nothing earth shattering going on here. And now these are not going to be points on more circles. So I can't just copy paste that formula again. That isn't going to work. What is going to work is if I use y equals mx plus b, essentially, I use rise over run, and I say that, well, I can say that my new tau point will be equal to the old one plus the slope, let me put the slope in first, times the change in x-coordinate. That's it. And now I want to guard some of this stuff with, uh, with dollar signs. I don't want to keep the column. I want to make sure it keeps coming back to row 10. I want to make sure the slope keeps coming back to row 11. I want to make sure that keeps going to, that the uh, D sigma keeps going to 10. And what I can do is I can find what happens for the other point. And uh, that also pulled over the column. I didn't want that. So there we go. Right. And it makes sense that we wind up in similar but different places. Right? They're going to be opposite each other. I could just put a negative sign on that. Okay. I'm going to copy these formulas down. For now, they should be giving me the same values, and they do. I'm going to make a slight tweak. I'm going to change the plus sign here to a minus. I'm going to change the plus sign here to a minus. And now I've got points that are on the tangent. Okay, these points here, this sigma, this sigma here with this tau plus and this sigma with this tau plus are points on the tangent to the point up here on top of the circle. These points, these two sigmas again with these two taus are points on the tangent line to the bottom of the circle. Well, let's just get them in the plot now, All right? So I'll right click on the plot, I'll choose select data. And I have no idea what this series is. It looks like it's useless. I'm going to add a new series. And my X values are going to be those two right there. My Y values are going to be those two right there. And we're done. And there's a line. Looks pretty tangent to me. I'm going to add another one. My X values are again going to be those two sigmas. My Y values are going to be those two shear stresses. And look what I just came up with. I have yet another tangent line on the bottom. Not long enough for you. That's why we made D sigma a variable. This is going to get ugly because the circle is going to shrink. But there's my tangent lines. All right, and I can make them as short or as long as I want because of the way I did the, uh, I, I, put in that variable for d sigma and right, I can make them ridiculous if I wish actually that looks really good I don't I shouldn't call that one ridiculous I'm gonna leave that one right I like the way that one looks because the circles still a circle God bless it right and there we go right this is how we can draw a tangent line in Excel using to, to a more circle in Excel and I can move that point around all I want now if I want the point instead to be at 20 instead of 25 Notice what happened to the tangent lines. They moved around with it. And it even it will not work for vertical. So don't put in the principal stresses for this. But if you put in the center value here, it'll give you horizontal lines. Works just fine. Notice how these values for tau plus and tau minus, the new point plus, new point minus values, are now the same when I chose the center. Let's go back to the one I liked. And there we go. This is pretty much how we can get more circle with some tangent lines. Thanks a lot. Keep the comments coming too. It's a good idea.